Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a thermal camera on the table. This is kind of basically like a digital camera, but its, it's sensor is thermal. Uh, but it also does combine a visible light camera with it. It's the Seek Thermal Shot or Pro. And the, the Shot Pro has a little higher resolution than the standard shot. It has 320 by 240 thermal resolution. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on because it takes a second to boot. Now when I said 320 by 240, if you were looking at this being a conventional digital camera, it'd be the 90s are calling they want their camera back because that's pretty low resolution. But as thermal goes, it's actually a pretty decent resolution, especially at the price point. This has an MSRP of 499. The MSRP was 699. But what I'm going to do, and it's going to, I'm going to have to do some adjusting to do this, but what you're seeing is my hand, but you're seeing a thermal image of my hand. It's based on the heat signature. And as you move, as I move my arm around, you can actually see veins. There's a large vein, and you can see the temperature differential. So what I'm gonna do throughout this video is I've taken some thermal images of different things, and I'll put them up on the screen, and I'll kind of walk through them what they do. But this is actually a pretty capable thermal camera for the price point. This is not a stain that you saw. That was the heat signature. So I had my arm laying on the table so there's my arm, and when I pulled my arm away, you could see the heat from my arm slowly dissipating. So it's actually pretty sensitive. It's a little bit slow to refresh. It's got a less than nine hertz uh, frame rate, so it's actually a little bit on the slow side. So as you see, it's kind of jittery. So you can see my hand moving outside the camera, you know, just the visible here, like my thumb, you can see my hand moving back and forth, and you can see there's some latency on the screen. It's not super fast. It's not a motion camera by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you can take a uh, video with it, but it's, it's going to be kind of jittery. What you find with thermal is thermal gets very expensive very quickly. You, you get faster frame rates, you put a comma in the price tag. At this price point, for what this is good for, it's got a few uses. One would be uh, scanning, you know, checking out the yard, you hear a noise, uh, trying to find the animal or whatever it is that made the noise. Uh, checking your ceiling. In fact, that's one of the things I'll, I'll put up a image of a ceiling in Florida in 100 degree weather with asphalt shingles. And you can see very clearly, you can see the rafters and you can see that it's pretty hot. You can also use this to look for heat leaks. Uh, you could also aim it at equipment to see if the equipment is malfunctioning. You know, if something's hot, like an electrical panel, a motor or something like that. So I'm going to kind of go through the menus, uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time going menu to menu, but if I, if I, that one was the wrong one to click. That takes you to the gallery. But I can look at the heat si signature. If I do the bullseye one, which is what mode it's in right now, it gives me the temperature at the center of the field. And let's say I put my hand in, it will update. If I do the one with the three dots, then I can create additional temperature points. So now I've got three temperature points. And as I do it, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of reflection from the studio lights. And as I move my hand around, you can see different temperatures at the different points. And then the last one is gives me basically the highs and lows of a, of a region. So I can set up a region. And as I move through the region, you'll see the min and max. So that's really helpful if you're expecting certain temperatures. The most common one will be most of the time you'll have it in center mode. The other thing that you can do, and by the way, you may hear periodically a click click. Uh, it's, it's an automatic knock, something that thermals do to keep the image stable and, and deal with the, the sensor and, and the tolerance of the sensor. This does it automatically. There's no step you have to do. The last piece is it gives you a number of different uh, color palettes. So I can set the color palette to yellow, and you'll see that it's kind of oranges and yellow on my hand. It's got a couple black modes, and I'm not going to go through every single mode, but you'll see, depending on what it is you want to do, there's different color palettes you can use and get different colorations on, on your hand in different saturation. The one that I tend to use the most is this bluish one right here, and that's the one I had it in in the beginning. That one seems to give me the most useful view of the object that I'm wanting to do. 
So the next thing I'll kind of show you is uh, a few other things. So here's an image of a cat sitting in its bed and you can clearly see that it's a cat. It gives you all the information you would need to know that this is a cat. This is the same cat with a temperature display. So it's showing the temperature of that part of the cat's body. So it is useful for locating and identifying animals. If you had a raccoon in the, in the yard, hidden in the bushes, you'd be able to tell it's a raccoon. And this one is the, this is a convection, a convection oven. So it's the, fa the heat fan assembly at the back of the convection oven. And you can clearly see that there's a big difference between the temperature of the body of the oven and the convection. Because what I did is I turned it down for about 30 seconds to create a heat differential. But the other thing, if you look here, here's the door and it looks like there's a heating element in the door. That's actually a infrared reflection of the top heating elements, but the thermal image is very clear and it shows you, you can see very clearly see the heating element reflected off the glass of the door. One other thing I want to show you, and this is something that this thermal camera has that not all do, and it's something called fusion. So if I hit this option, what I'm looking at is a visible light camera. I'll try to get rid of the glare as much as I can. A visible light camera. And this is basically, you know, any regular digital camera looking at my hand. If I go all the way over here to the far right, this is pure thermal. So this is the thermal image of my hand. This fusion, if I get it to take, what this does is it merges a visible light and a, a uh, thermal image. And right now the overlay is not perfectly lined up. There's an option in here to adjust the overlay. Unfortunately, it's, there's parallax, it's distance specific. So I'm gonna show you a, a difference between the various modes uh, in the pool area where I do have it lined up. And you can see there's some tile areas and some other things that'll kind of show the sharpness of it. So here it is with just the thermal. Here it is with the visible. And then here it is with the fusion and you'll see that they overlay nicely. So I have it calibrated for that distance. So if you're going to use the fusion mode, which is very useful in equipment, if you're trying to figure out what is that thing that's hot, if you can get a little bit of the, the visible light outline of it, you can identify, oh, that's the power supply or that's that resistor or that capacitor. And you can adjust the transparency with this slider of how much it's thermal versus how much it's visible or somewhere in between. But just keep in mind at different distances you'll have to calibrate it. If you're using this for work type thing, you know, if you're, let's say, an HVAC contractor, you're probably going to just set it for the typical distance you use. But if you're a homeowner or a hunter or something like that, you may have to recalibrate it depending on what you're after. I would say that the, the fusion is most useful for identifying hotspots and equipment, less useful for things like identifying an animal. You're, you're going to use really the thermal signature for that. And as you can see, it's relatively small. It fits on the palm of my hand, so it's not a big thing. And it's not heavy, it weighs 7.2 ounces. So it is kind of, it's not a cumbersome thing to mess with. And, and again, with the MSRP of 499, it is reasonably priced. So one other image I'm gonna show you, uh, this is a, in my pocket. In this image in my pocket, you can clearly see I'm carrying something that I would want to keep concealed. So if you're carrying things that you want to keep concealed, let's say in your pocket, you probably will have a temperature difference that will show on thermal. So thermal kind of unhides things that are hidden. And the thing that's in my pocket is something you would commonly see on this channel. So uh, one of the things about thermal is it uncovers things that uh, are hidden by clothing. A few of the last uh, stats type things, this has an IP54 protection rating. It has four gig of storage on it for taking pictures, and the, the, all the images that I show you came off that storage. You know, I saved it in the storage. And it has up to a four hour battery life. And you can see for the entire time of this video, plus all the images I took leading up to this video, like the oven, I still have most of the battery left. Now there's one feature I kind of want to talk about, and unfortunately I can't say anything positive about this feature, is it does have a Wi-Fi feature where you can stream video from the camera directly to their app. This comes with an app. I tried on two different devices, I can't get it to work. And I'm a techie, so I can get things to work. The app crashes, the app consistently says that it can't find the camera, and no setting on either of the devices would make it work. 
So at no point did I get the Wi-Fi streaming part of this to the app on two different Android devices to work. It just may be, I've got the, you know, these are fairly new devices. They've got the latest Android, the apps may be behind. But if you're buying it for that capability to stream from the camera to the app, I didn't find that I could get that to work and the app crashed a lot, even just moving through the options and the settings in the app. And then, uh, you know, you hit back and it crashes to the Android desktop. So I didn't find the app to be anywhere near stable enough to use it. The camera, other than being a little laggy, it doesn't have the fastest processor on the planet. The camera worked good. And what I would say is, if you want it to be super responsive, super snappy, super high resolution, plan to spend a significant uh, increase in the money. At this price point, uh, with the MSRP of $499, this is a good camera, a good bang for the buck at that price point. If you spend something with a comma in it, you're going to get a more capable device. Uh, but that's just kind of how that thermal works these days. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.